Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to see how resonance frequency affects the impedance of the circuit. Now remember, the impedance, Z, is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared. And so we know that at resonance frequency, the reactance goes to zero, and the impedance then becomes equal to the square root of R squared, so therefore simply equal to R. So we know that Z equals R at F sub naught, which means that x is equal to zero. And that's what we find right there. So what does that look like? What does the total impedance look like as a function of the frequency? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to add the resistance to the circuit. So let's say that we have a resistor in the circuit that has this amount of resistance right here. And so that would be R. And R, of course, is going to be constant. R is not affected by the frequency of the circuit. So now we realize that we have to add all three the x sub l, the x sub c, and the resistance together, and notice that it's going to be a vector sum. Now, let me change this a little bit right here. So let's say that our uh, capacitive reactance is smaller than the inductive reactance. So when we have x, that's equal to x sub l minus x sub c. Yes, it is the absolute value, but in this case, since x sub l is bigger than x sub c, it doesn't matter. And so that means that this here would be our reactance. So this here would be x. And then if we add the two together, we get the vector sum. And that would then be the impedance z. Notice, as the x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, which means as x sub l becomes equal to x sub c, then you can see that z then eventually will become equal to the resistance r. So the smallest value that the impedance can have is equal to r. Other than that, it will be larger than r, depending upon which is bigger, x sub l or x sub c. So if we're going to graph the impedance on the circuit, it will turn out to be something like this. So the impedance will become something like that. The lowest value that it can have is right here, equal to the resistance, and then it'll start increasing again. And it'll go up like that. And actually, I think if I were to do this correctly, let me try this again. So it'll increase, 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 and then eventually it'll go linear because there'll be a linear increase because X sub L will also linearly increase. And so that will be a curve representing of the impedance in the circuit, Z, and the lowest impedance you can have in the circuit is equal, is at the resonance frequency, because at the resonance frequency, X sub L equals X sub C, and impedance will then become equal to the resistance R. And that's how what we mean by resonant frequency. At resonant frequency, the impedance is equal to the resistance. And let's draw a little circle around that so we can see that that's the key here. At the resonance frequency, when X sub L equals X sub C, the impedance will be equal to the resistance in the circuit, and the reactance of the inductor and the capacitor no longer have an effect.